PFT and Big Cat, of course, they host, uh, pardon my take, the biggest sports podcast in the world. It's the biggest sports podcast in the world. Is that? Up, man? How are you? Uh, so, yeah, sports. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you yes. go with that, right? Something yes. Like that. Why not? <laughs> we say it, so if you say something with confidence, people will believe it. It really is amazing, right? Like you just exactly. sell it and they buy it. Right. And it's wrong. You guys having like my wife is like talking to her dad, and she's like, you know, they're the number two show on Sirius XM. Sam and Sam, Jim and Sam, and and. Her dad was like, "Oh, did you guys get the numbers?" And I'm like, "I was no. really kind of banking on no follow up questions." Want to yeah. follow up. <laughs> We're going with anecdotal evidence. Yeah. You know, someone said something to me on the street must be number two. No, number two is exactly perfect too because nobody's going to dig too deep on that. If you right. said number one, you get all sorts of follow up. And you get a challenge from the number one, but no one's going to say yeah. I'm number two because yeah. you really can't prove it. No it's one gives a fuck. To be. Right. Yeah, you're not going to yeah. get anybody else here being like, "No, we're number two. Like yeah. nobody wants to fight over that. That's a bad hill to yeah, die. But if you're on. saying the biggest sports, uh, sp- yeah, and then you got fucking Bill Simmons, you got other guys who oh, are no, we're bigger than him. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. I mean, on the rankings, you want to go by the iTunes rankings, well, we, which we don't know. They just but. no, they just came out like yeah. literally thirty minutes ago. Okay, the 2018 rankings came out, and we're, where are you? We beat the shit out of Bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's go. Good. What's up, let's Bill? Go. No, yeah. it's crazy though because it's one of those things that we we start, you know we kind of started as a joke and and uh, it keeps growing and it's like, is this ever gonna? We actually have had this conversation like, is it gonna stop at some point? Are we gonna plateau? And it just hasn't happened yet. So, yeah. so we're just we're, edging. Yeah, <laughs> just edging. Those yeah, we're like <laughs> sting. Yeah, I'm not, you're never gonna come over and over and over. <laughs> you're just never gonna pop. Yeah, nope. never gonna reach that pinnacle. <laughs> so when you guys start doing really well, when part of my take like kind of takes off, do you start to go, oh shit, do we have a responsibility to actually talk about sports here? Like, are people <laughs> are people coming here for something now, or do we just keep goofing off? Well, I think there's it, we do the thing is we are like diehard sports fans, so we do love talking about sports. But at the end of the day, it's a comedy show, and we're trying to make people laugh. And so we'll every now and then we'll get. I think I had someone this morning being like, "I'm just always I loved your show, but I'm always bummed out that you bash on Urban Meyer." And it's like. Well, of course we're going to bash on Urban Meyer. He fakes that he's got a heart attack every time the Ohio State loses a game. So, mm-hmm. but I, I think it's just that blend of you know a little bit of real, a lot of fun, trying to interview someone, get some real information out of them, try to bust their balls and have some fun with it. Is it amazing how mad people get at fucking sports stuff too? Oh, like if yep. you fucking bash well, who they don't like, or you I bash who they like, or you don't like who everyone, they do. This, everyone. This week is like the perfect example of that too, because the college football rankings come out, and no matter what, you're going to have three fan bases that hate you. Right. And so this year it was you know Ohio State. Georgia, maybe a little UCF getting in there too. Like there was an argument to be made for a lot of different teams, and so it's it's fun to poke that hornet's nest, and everybody seems to enjoy it until it's like their team. And then uh, there are certain fan bases, like Ohio State's one of them. The Steelers, believe it or not, like if you make fun of the Steelers, they will fucking go at yeah. you. Any place that's yeah. fucking still like a steel or mining town, yes. yes. where college sports, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Big Ben is beyond reproach. Yeah. Don't make fun but of him. But those people will keep coming back because they're diehard sports fans too. So you you make fun of their team, they'll get maybe a little angry for. A second, but then we're moving on to the next team, and they'll have fun with that. So do you get that like every week? There's always somebody that's going. You know, usually you guys are pretty funny, but you were way off this yeah. week. That was yeah. not funny. Yeah. It was stupid. Yeah, usually whenever you make fun of uh, whoever's favorite, cor- whoever your favorite quarterback is, or you know, and, and the thing is, we are we are very very open about our bias. So you know, we've we have Blake Bortles as a friend of ours, and he got benched, and we just won't talk about it on the show, or we'll just be like, <laughs> you know what, like that was a big mistake, even though he's had a terrible season. We just <laughs> so, Cody Kessler for no reason yeah. now. Yeah. We're, we're very <laughs> open when we're telling you like, yo, we only like this guy because he's our friend. Nothing to do with his talent. Right. Have there been guys that you'll tease on the show and then become friends with and then now yeah. we don't make fun of him anymore because he, now he's our yeah, friend. Joe happened. Buck is probably a good example uh-huh. of that. So like we start, everybody kind of hated Joe Buck a couple years ago. So of course. We, we went in on him. He came on our show and he was he was awesome. He's just like genuinely a good person. And so he's been back on like five times since then or something. He yeah. keeps inviting me. That's, that's what started annoying me. But now we got to go to like the other side of Joe Buck because everybody loves Joe now. Yeah. In the last couple of years he's like rehabilitated his image so now we have to start being a little bit mean to him again. But right. It's, it's just right. You shit on somebody and then when you talk to him you're like fuck I like this guy. It's oh, kind of hard to with, shit on yeah, him. Yeah. I don't know how big his uh, college basketball fans you guys are. I'm assuming not at all. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But nope. Tom Crean who was the coach at Indiana now coach at Georgia we used to shit on him all the time and then we met him he we were we take a tour every single uh, May where we get in a van and we just drive and try to interview people. He had just been fired from Indiana Indiana, and we hit him up, and we're like, "Hey, we're going to be in Indiana. Can you come come do our show?" He showed up. We were in a uh, party city parking lot in a sketchy van. Sat with us for an hour and a half, and we're like, "Damn, 
we like this guy. Has like, there been anybody you guys wanted to talk to? You're like, all right, this guy will be great. He'll be a fun. And they just because sometimes athletes are fucking touch and go. Yeah, man. yeah. No, they don't want to talk. They fucking just sit there. Well, you know what it is? Is uh, you guys probably deal with it all the time. You can tell almost instantly when someone when you're doing an interview with someone and they're just there to plug something. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. just like let's talk about the painful. soap. Shut up. Yeah. No one cares about the soap, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah. Right. So we had an interview with Dak Prescott, who's the quarterback of the Cowboys. And at the end of the interview, on a hot mic, he the PR person was like, "How'd that go?" And he just goes, "Miserable." It was terrible. <laughs> and we put it in the show. We yeah. put it in of the course, show. Of course, yeah. <laughs> it's the best thing that could have happened. Yeah, but, I mean, you're like, this he awful interview too. is yeah. worth playing because yes. we have that soundbite. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So these guys come on the show and they think they're going on, you know, like just any other sports show. And they come on. And the first question we ask him is like, "Hey, how come you're named after a porn star? Because his name <laughs> his name is Dakota Rain." And, <laughs> and, and he had never been asked that. He was like, "What?" Yeah. So at, at the end, he, he goes, "It was miserable." They asked me about porn. <laughs> what a <laughs> baby. You're around guys yeah. who are fucking uh, beating their wives and you're worried exactly. about fucking right. somebody. Your right. boss is Jerry Jones. Right. Your boss is banging strippers and, right. and prostitutes during games, probably. But most people understand that if they come on and they at least just have fun, like you don't even have to answer that question. Yeah. The right. porn question, you just have to laugh. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people are like, oh, he's a cool guy. We had Kareem on, on one time. Oh, I, mean, I love Abdul Jabbar. We, we can get into Kareem. He was yeah. terrible. We, he, he was okay <laughs> with us, but he was pushing a book about like black <laughs> culture or black heroes and it was all right fine but we're talking basketball with him i don't know because he's the fucking highest scorer in nba yep. history mm-hmm. and his publicist who's a delight yes uh yes. was Love a bit her. miffed <laughs> that we were not uh talking about the book and it's like the book we'll get to the book we you can't so just you talk about too. the book mm-hmm. oh lovely oh, woman. every God. person that has ever interviewed kareem we, that's the first thing that you talk about yeah right? Yeah, I, she, I, I, I think I think Cream was asked for what he asked for like an iced tea, and and one of our guys just handed him an iced tea, and she screamed. She's like, "No, no, put it in a glass, put it in." A glass. We're like, "What the? What's going on right <laughs> yeah, here?" Yeah, she's so, notorious. I, I yeah. am very interested as to what their relationship is. Yes. It may just be, and I jokingly guessed it might be something uh, different than what it is, but yes. I, I could be wrong. Yes, Jim but, started yeah. going into sub dom potential <laughs> relationships. No, but Kareem she's was. I mean, is that, is that, I don't. You know, I don't. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise. Me, but I because I've seen them in the airport together, and I mean, it's probably just a publicist relationship. Yeah, they probably know? just. But just is it? It's possible friends. that he's getting pegged. Yeah. It's, it's, po- it's possible. Well, well, it's anything's to, possible. It's, yeah. it's, it's always possible. Yeah. It's always, yeah. I yeah. hope for it every time I meet someone. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I want to see like the sex swing that would have to be designed for a seven foot one person <laughs> to be able to get pegged. Yeah. Dude, I felt bad for Kareem. I saw him in LAX, and we were on a flight, and he was like three seats behind me. So he sits on the fucking plane, and he puts the blanket over his head. Because he's, he wants to just like block out the light and he's so, everyone's, he's the most recognizable guy in Los Ever, Angeles. Right? But he's sitting there with just a blanket over his face trying to be left alone in this seat on a plane. Just like a it's tall a, version of Michael Myers as a ghost? Yeah. yeah it's kind of gotta be impossible <laughs> to be that tall. Like you just. Yeah. Thank yeah. God I'm short. That's why I am yeah. not tall because that'd be tough. Uh, I was actually smart at you. Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. a question for you, happy, Sam. So the um, you do wrestling stuff. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. I've seen you do stuff with uh, Pat McAfee, who we used to work with. Right. Someone asked me for the because it was a college football playoffs. It was another way of doing Mount Rushmore. The top four finishing moves in wrestling history. Oh my God. Well, Tombstone Pile Driver is Did on that. there. Stone Cold Stunner is on there. I probably put the figure four on there just okay. because Valentine, of Ric Flair right? yeah. and Greg Valentine. I Sharpshooter sure. and I think Sweet Chin Music. I don't know if I could put. How sweet- about the leg drop? Oh. <laughs> I mean, look, Hogan made it look great, <laughs> right? But I don't know how effective. Plus, he has spine problems that stem from it. Like, it really oh, wasn't really? that great of a move to do. Yeah. Um, sharpshooter's a really good one. I'd probably put sharpshooter in there before. Yes. Sweet chin. You know, music. my favorite was I like the Bronco Buster. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just Wait, like right on your face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he would just put his dick in your face uh-huh. like really quickly. <laughs> you know? Did you ever see the footage of him tearing his asshole doing the? Um, um, uh, fucked up Bronco Buster. I remember that. I have story. not, but I would like to. So yeah. he tore his asshole doing this Bronco Buster at like an indie show, and he didn't know how bad it was because he was wearing like rubber tights, oh. and so everything was packed in, and so he kept doing the match, and he went through a table, and he did all this stuff. And then he went to the after party, still in his tights, not knowing, because it was all, you know, everything was cinched in. And then he gets back to the hotel room, and he said he almost bled out oh because God. he took his tights down, and it, everything from his asshole just pours out. Oh, oh, you know how Jesus. tough you oh, have to be? Oh, you're show the video? He's, God damn it. You know how I tough you have so. to be to have a bleeding <laughs> asshole and not notice at yeah. the after party? Dude, I would kill myself. He's <laughs> X-Pac. He's the fucking man. He is, yeah. he is a tough guy. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar should wear those tights around right? <laughs> just in case. <laughs> <laughs> X-Pac. Uh, my favorite, that's my favorite tag team of all time, X-Pac and Kane. Yeah? I mean, it was just so weird and, and didn't really make sense. And, no you know. sense. But that's why, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, here he comes. He's going to set him up. And Jim, you're not really that 
not familiar with a Bronco oh, Buster, kicks. right? Oh. No. Okay, Xbox watch this. Is He's in a corner. This is quite a YouTube video. Here it comes. He moved. Oh, oh no. Jesus. Oh, no. You see how he hit the steel part yeah, of the turnbuckle? Yeah, yeah, he immediately he grabs. Yeah. Oh, and he grabs it, and he knows yeah. something's wrong. But he keeps... He, so he finishes the match? Uh, he finishes the match here. Yeah, I he gets hit with a chair. Oh, he goes with a chair. His like, asshole's sore. When wrestlers get actually hurt and they like whisper, they're like, "Yo, dude, this isn't funny day. anymore. Like, I'm <laughs> fucked up, bro. My asshole just got torn. Yeah, like, please end Legit. this right now. But he kicked out. Him. Like, that's what wrestlers do. He's like, that's not the finish. So I'm kicking out. Oh <laughs> I'm, not I'm not. Yeah, I might. My asshole's torn, but I'm not losing. <laughs> I'm just glad that Xbox goes to a bar wearing those tights afterwards. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, of course he does. Sad. I was disappointed if he didn't. Is he? grabbing his asshole. There's like a hundred people there too. Yeah. He's in he's in like way better shape now. This is when he was in his like kind of dark days. Yeah, oh my God. like right around the time you would think you'd tear your ass. So the other guy is just laying <laughs> right, there. That story arc. <laughs> he, he probably told the other guy, "Look, there's a problem." So the other guy's just laying there. Yeah, he's like pounding the he's, he's pounding the mat. In pain. Because oh. his asshole hurts. So what God. happens if you tear your asshole? Do you get stitches? Yeah, yeah I think yeah, so. so like, Inside you your asshole. Yeah, and I think you got to walk around on like with one of those, uh, you know, uh, uh, inner tube things to sit on and everything. They probably put oh, you like on laxatives too, so yeah. it's like yeah. soft. Yeah, still yeah. though, the, I, I imagine you get the the likelihood of an infection with a torn asshole is probably pretty high. Huge, yeah. huge. And then we found out after this, Ugh. he tore his asshole. <laughs> His asshole got fixed, and then he broke his dick fucking a girl. <laughs> yeah. So just everything that's on his just pelvis. It for him. Yeah, that's the life. That's the life of Spock, man. Yeah, Fuck, you guys. Uh, uh, were you ultimately happy that ESPN went the way ESPN went? Because I feel like it made you a dangerous, notorious podcast <laughs> that you only Bad lasted boys. one day yeah. on yeah. ESPN. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely. I think there's there, like looking back on it, in the moment, it sucked. Like, you don't want to, obviously... Because you put, guys were going to be, like, ESPN was going in this other direction. Right, you you guys were going to be the faces. Effort, of, yeah. We were, you know, it was it was one of those situations, too, where they wanted to take the risk, but they didn't want to put in the money. So we had a full show on an absolutely ridiculous budget. Like, I sometimes I talk to people, like, oh, you didn't have writers? Like, no, what, what, we couldn't afford writers. Yeah, we were doing the whole awesome. thing. So we are going to kill ourselves doing the show. So when it got canceled, it sucked. But it also, like you said... The, the bad boy image intact. Yeah, yeah they, they were kind of like keeping us at arm's length to begin with. I mean, yes, there was like a lot of buzz around it, but at the end of the day, it was a 1 a.m. show on ESPN2. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not like they were like, they, they were putting us like front and center. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was awful. In retrospect, it was like, yeah, that's a funny story. Like, I don't care how you slice it. It sucked at the time, but the fact that we, we worked hard, we got on ESPN finally, and then it, it lasted about two days. Like, that's, yeah. that's a funny story. So, it's, like, we can look back and laugh on it now, and yeah, it gave us, like, a little bit of street cred or whatever, but, um, yeah, I think in, re in retrospect, it probably worked out well for both sides. Well, I think ESPN's probably happy. It made them look stupid, though. It made them look stupid. It, like, them look stupid. it yeah. also gave us, and I hate to say this out loud, but whenever someone thinks they're, like, dunking on us, they'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, you had one, your show got canceled on ESPN, and I was just like, I don't really care. So, it's, <laughs> it's almost like a free, like, they think they get me, but I'm just like, I really don't give a fuck. To right. be canceled after one episode, you can't be so bad that they can't, there has to be something else. Exactly. Right, right, That's right. Good point. With five episodes, mm -hmm. they'd be like, well, that show sucks. If you had nine episodes right. out of 12, you'd be like, oh, like, like, We're uh, the what if. What happened? Yeah. yeah what, but We're this like Penny them. Hardaway or Grant Hill. I was going to say like, Len Bias. Len, yeah. Yeah, Len, yeah. Len Bias yeah. or Marcus <laughs> Dupree. We are the ultimate what if. We could have been the greatest show ever. Probably would have sucked, but we could have been, been, been the greatest ever. Could have been the greatest ever. I mean, you're ever. kicking Bill Simmons' ass in podcasting. You could have kicked Crushed his ass Bill Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. He's True. much more attractive than I am, though, so TV might be a better medium for him. All right, yeah. maybe you're right. Yeah. Were you guys bummed that, uh, that McAfee left Barstool? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, Pat was a friend, and I, I actually, Pat, coming to Barstool, he, I tell his story, but he DM'd me on Twitter and was like, hey, can you watch my stand-up set? And he sent me a DVD of it in 2013. I was like, who the fuck sends DVDs? <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, you could have just sent me, like, a Dropbox link or put uh -huh. it on YouTube. So, like, we were friends, and, you know, it didn't work out, but uh, I think we're still friends. I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Well, uh... uh Barstool Radio uh, has finally gotten you guys over. Like, you guys have been one of the biggest, if not the biggest podcast on that Barstool network, but you weren't on the Sirius XM channel. I was, uh, PFT just added his show. Right. So, yeah. How come you're not doing part of my take as a serious show? Just because you want to keep the podcast brand as it is? Yeah, I think people like it first thing in the morning. And if, you know, we're able to record it like late at night so they got it there when it comes out the next day. And gotcha. I think it's more valuable actually to the company. Yeah. Uh, on like via podcast selling ads against them and all that what stuff. What time do you guys take? Uh, we, uh, it depends on, on the day. But if it's like Thursday night or Sunday night when there's football, 
We get out at about like 2 a.m., 1 30 a.m. What was it like an hour show, two hours? Yeah, about an hour, yeah. hour and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and it wouldn't, you know, doing it every day would kind of burn us out as well. How yeah. many a week? So, mm-hmm. Three times a week. Isn't it great? Is there anything, like, I love when we go to LA and tape late at night because we're so used to being, is there anything better than taping at night? Dude, it's fucking great. Dude, when I did the, yep. when I did the solo show from 9 p.m. to midnight, is great. You just nobody's around to bother you. You do yep. whatever you want. The fans are. It's it was, my it's mind so much works fun. better at night. Yes. Yes. I'm a stand up, so it's oh, like I think better. We're the at exact night. same way. Whenever I mean this, doing this right now. This sucks. is this is how <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what I've been yeah. saying for the last yeah. thirty minutes. You yeah. get used to it though. <laughs> but you get used to just going. All right, I, I have to be funny or whatever under these circumstances. Right, but the huh? mornings are never ideal. Right. Nobody likes them.